Welcome back. We are now less than a month from Election Day and more women than ever are on the ballot. Whether the outcome is a blue wave or a red wave, it will definitely be a wave tinged with pink. 234 Republican and Democratic women are running for U.S. House seats, including three here in Colorado. That is 67 more than two years ago when the previous record was set. 22 women from the two major parties will be on ballots for Senate seats across the nation. And in six states, both the Republican and Democratic candidates are women, including Arizona, which will get its first female senator no matter who wins. And depending on next month's election results, Nevada could be the first state in the nation to have a female majority in their state legislature. Well, Gail Shetler is a former Colorado lieutenant governor and one-time candidate for governor here in our state, as well as a recent inductee into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. And uh, glad to have you back, as always. Thank We've you, Anne. had you here before to talk about this surge of women running. And these, these numbers are encouraging, right? I'm thrilled. I think it's it's so encouraging. And um, one of the, the one of the numbers that really strikes me is that in the 2016 cycle, there were 1,900 women who called Emily's List, which is a major PAC supporting women candidates, Democratic women candidates. So there were 1,900 two years ago. This cycle, there are 42,000. 42,000. That's astonishing. So that is Emily's list. You were you were telling me earlier there is no Republican group. Doing There's no this. Republican equivalent. There used to be, but there isn't a Republican equivalent. So I have no idea how many Republican women have been motivated to run. But to go from 1,900 to 42,000, that says that women are really, really motivated to run. And you have made this your your mission now to That's make sure thing. that more women are elected. So, uh, with those numbers, what do you attribute that? them to your your work the work of Emily's list or what we see I think women in are DC? upset with what's happening in the country today I think that women um, in fact I've had so many women say to me I didn't like politics I didn't want to get involved and then I watched what was happening in the country and I watched the sort of disrespect of women and I had to get involved I had to do something so I'm gonna run I'm gonna run for the school board I'm gonna run for the city council I'm gonna run for the US Senate and I'm gonna run for governor it's up and down the line women are saying I've got to do something and I'm gonna do it and what do you think held women back before women need to be asked um, women need to be asked to dance and so and a lot most women I talk to say well you know I, I'm thinking about running someday but I need to, I've got to get my law degree, or I've got to get my degree, or I've got to let my kids grow up, or I'm too old, or I'm too young, or I'm through this. Men stand up and say, here I am, I'm ready. Women need to be asked and encouraged to run. And I think for the first time in my many years in politics, women are saying, I don't need to wait, I'm gonna do it. Hmm. This is the year I'm gonna do it. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, half, I They're mean, upset. women are half the country, right? 51%, so women are upset. So we've gone from the year of the woman in 1992 when we went from one to six senators, U.S. senators, mm -hmm. to 23 today, both parties. And if we are lucky, we're going to end up with closer to 30. Um, after this, I'm looking for 51. That's when, uh, that's when I can sit on my rocking chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so getting people to vote, that's a whole nother issue because I, I just read an NYU study that found voter turnout is highest among college graduates. 40% um, who do not have college degrees, they, they don't vote, but 80% of college graduates do vote. Where, uh, how, why? Why, why? Um, I don't really know, but I do remember some research, and it's, it's old now, that said that a lot of women who um, don't feel confident will rely on their husbands and if their husbands or their brothers hmm. or their fathers don't vote then they don't vote. Maybe it's much harder for them to get to the polls. If I am a woman with a couple of kids and I'm working three jobs, um, I can't get to the polls. I think that now it's a lot easier if you have mail ballots, but it's also much harder to, to get your, to be able to vote. It's much harder to be able to register to vote. So I think there are a whole lot of barriers for women who have families, who have several jobs, who may not have transportation, um, A, to register to vote, and B, to actually vote. Because I, I, I have read some statistics that, are, that a lot of people, and not just women, just feel like it doesn't affect them anyway, or, or that maybe they that's don't the have change. an impact. Maybe that's the change. Maybe that's the change now. It'll be very interesting to see how women vote in this election, because I think women are saying to themselves, I've got to do something. There have been so many really close votes. Um, Heidi Heitkamp won her last election in North Dakota for the U.S. Senate by 2,500 votes. 
And wow. that means that it matters. Yeah. Every single vote sure. matters. There have been votes that have been 250. Um, of 250 wow, a margin. difference, yeah. yeah. Uh, right now there are six female governors in the U.S., four of those are running for re-election, a dozen other women are on the gubernatorial ballots in other states, so how are things different now compared to when you ran? Um, well, more women are running, so right, that's, that's, a, that's yes. a very good thing. In terms of how people look at women running, I'm not sure it's so terribly different. I hear women say to me this year, they've heard the same things I heard 20 years ago when I ran for governor. You know, um, look at your hair. Why don't you do something about mm. your hair? Yeah. Or some woman, one woman said to me, a woman I thought was my friend said to me, you're too intimidating. You need to wear a <laughs> granny dress. You know, I've never seen a governor in a granny dress. So I'm not male sure. Male or female. Male or female. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure that it's terribly different except that when more women run, more women are going to win. And when more women vote, and when more women support women, then women will win. More acceptable. And very quickly, Colorado, you would think Colorado would be a progressive enough state to be able to get a, a female on the ballot. You would think. We have never had a woman governor or senator. I'm hoping in 2020 that we will elect a woman senator. Gail Shetler, this is a great conversation. We will Thanks, keep Sam. having this, right? I, I love <laughs> it. Thank you. Back, as always, back in the moment.